welcome to another faculty highlight with History's Calling, where will it take you? Today we're visiting with one of our own professors, Dr. Amin. Hello. Hi. Thank you so much for being here. Before I ask you the one question that we're going to cover today, I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about you, where you've been, and how you got to where you are here in the History Department. Um, sure, I have a sort of a different path to becoming a professor than a lot of your professors in that I worked in the software world for 20 years. Um, I was a European studies undergrad, so a lot of history and a lot of literature. And then uh, I, when I graduated, I got a master's in business and I worked in software. Um, and then uh, I decided that I really was interested in history. And I went back to school and got a PhD, and that's how I ended up here at BYU. So this is a second career for me. That's amazing. And what, what was it that, that propelled you to do the work that you're doing right now? I think, you know, I was just super interested in it. And I, the whole time I was working in software, in a, in a job that I loved, by the way, I didn't hate my job, but I was always taking night classes in history. And so I thought, I'm just going to see if I can get a master's in this. And then I got the master's and I thought, I'm going to see if I can get a PhD and just sort of see where it, where it takes me. So that's, a, that's really great. And I'm so glad to hear that because I feel like I have a lot of students that come and visit with me that feel like it needs to look a certain way and be a certain way. And so it's nice to know that you have this interest and that you just kind of tried things on and then this is what ended up happening as a result of following your interest and following your passion. So that's really great. Yeah. <laughs> so um, the reason why I have Dr. Amin here is I, I have this question of what, what do you wish Dr. Amin's students knew about the value of experiential learning as it's going to prepare them for post-graduation opportunities? Uh, well, I have been the um, internship advisor for the last, I don't know, seven years since I came to BYU. And so I've seen a lot of students come through my office who have done internships. And the thing I would like you to know is that when they're done with them, they think they're fantastic and they're so glad they did it. And they're glad that they broke out of their shell a little bit. And so I would just tell you that, you know, they say, they all say that they learned a lot, that they um, are just really grateful for the opportunity. Um, a lot of times, I, I know my own personal personality is I'm an introvert and I'm not one to kind of speak up and put myself out there. And sometimes the idea of doing an internship or doing a special project or some kind of research can be intimidating, but if you can just force yourself past that and force yourself to make contacts with people, you'll just learn so much and you will also be building a network because that's how a lot of people, that's how you get a lot of jobs is through your network, through people you know, by reaching out to them. And so by doing internships and by doing um, you know, real life projects with your professors, you are, you are building your network that you can tap into to find a job later on. So um, sometimes it seems like it's hard to know how to apply the skills you're learning in college, but an internship is a really great way to, great way to do that. And you can also learn what you don't want to do. <laughs> So I had a student go on an internship. She really thought she wanted to do a certain kind, a certain kind of field. I think it was work at like arch archives and she was planning to go on for grad school and all this stuff. And she did a summer long internship in an archive and came back and said, I just hated that. I couldn't imagine doing that my whole life. And I thought, well, good thing you learned that now. <laughs> So it's just a fabulous way to build your network and to learn a lot and to learn about yourself. I love that. And what were some of the other things you said that your students would often say it was a really valuable experience? Were there some things that they tell you that stuck out that you think, oh, I, I really want students to know that they can get these other things out of it. So aside from maybe knowing how your skills will play into certain fields and maybe knowing not what to do, is there anything else that you feel would be valuable? 
Well, I think um, you learn about the kind of work environments that you do well in, and you learn about how to establish good business relationships. One of the things that um, frequently come up on the reports after, after the internship, everybody has to write a report of what they did. And one of the things that comes up is they all say, I need to learn how to write better. <laughs> Uh, and so they discover that about themselves. Like some of them went into it thinking, yeah, I, I can write, I can write a paper. And then they get out in the real world and they, and they learn, I need to learn how to communicate better. That's one of the things I learned. And I think, and I always think, oh, it's a good thing you learn that now you have, you have a little bit of time left in your college career to focus on, to get some help and learning how to communicate better. So it's little things like that and learning where, where you're strong and where you're weak, um, learning how to get along with people and how to work in an organization. Another thing that we hear a lot from, from students is, you know, I think I was too shy. I wasn't speaking up as much because they're more used to the professor student dynamic. Whereas in a workplace, it's kind of peers, right? You're, you're among equals. And so you have to learn to speak up more and to present ideas and things like that. I really like that. I really like that. Uh, before we started talking in this interview, we talked a little bit about other qualifying examples that, that maybe would be helpful for our students as they are trying to gauge how else to spend their elective credits, et cetera. What were some, you were on hiring committees back, <laughs> back in the day, right? And, and so what were some of the things that you, you were compelled toward when it came to a qualifying candidate? Yes. So... As I said, I worked in the software industry and what I did was called product management, which is half technical, um, working with engineers and half marketing and sales and working with people trying to sell the product and customers. And so in that field, when we saw a resume come through, when I was trying to hire someone for my product team, if I saw a resume come through that had a combination of maybe a history background or an English background and technical skills, we literally fought amongst other departments to be able to hire that person. <laughs> because no matter what job you go into, you need to be able to communicate clearly, to analyze disparate information, pull it all together, and then communicate your analysis. And we would get a lot of really strong engineers who couldn't communicate what they were thinking or what they were doing. So when we found that combination, it was, it was a really winning combination. I know from my own background, I uh, studied computer science. Um, I majored, as I said, in, in European, his, European studies, but I studied computer science because I was from Silicon Valley and I figured I was gonna get sucked into it. <laughs> but when you see those combination of skills, and I, I see the same thing, um, for history, if you go get like a digital humanities minor or computer science minor, or uh, I work in the family history program, if you go get a biology minor, that can help you do genetic genealogy and that kind of thing. I, I think, um, think clearly about maybe the minors adding on skills, and that makes you just so desirable to people. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. And Students, if you're watching this and you're not sure, and you're just kind of stumbling through, you know that you have a desire, you just don't know where it will take you, please come and see our faculty. In fact, Dr. Amin, can you give a little plug? Because I feel like sometimes our professors are saying, I have office hours for a reason. <laughs> please come and use them. Yes, please do come see me. Um, I see a lot of students every semester in my role as the internship advisor, um, but I love seeing students. I do have office hours for a reason, but I also um, can, if you can't meet at that time, then we can find a time. And now that we've discovered Zoom, we can even do it <laughs> over Zoom uh, to make it a little easier. So I'd be happy to see you. All right, thank you so much for your time today. We really appreciate it. Thank you.